We're back on this 2004 Subaru Forester, second video. So I started the vacuum to see if I could use the ultrasonic leak detector under vacuum, but it appears the vacuum leak doesn't, or vacuum leak, it appears the leak doesn't want to leak under vacuum. Now, super highly moisture contaminated. I could not get it at, while it's drawing vacuum, it was just stagnating at around 1500 or so um, microns. And that's because, not because just of the leak, the leak I don't think is leaking right now. And you see it going down. This is a stabilization phenomenon because I just shut off the vacuum right now. And a lot of you guys who buy a micron gauge will notice this sometimes and it won't make sense to you. Uh, I've gone into that in other videos. But, so this one, no leak under it. Check out this oil. This is one oil job. This was crystal clear. That oil was crystal clear when I started. That is all water from this car. And if you remember from the first video, this had zero PSI in it. Super moisture contaminated, loaded up my vacuum pump oil, which is that expensive oil, um, just on this car alone. That was it, boom. What else am I gonna go over? Oh, nitrogen. So now, and what I want to show you, the vacuum is off. I was gonna do a vacuum decay thing for you guys and show you, if you look here, when I, oh, you could see it right there. 1500 microns and 88, that was with its running. You could see the point where I shut off the valve and the vacuum actually went down. And look at it, it keeps on going down. Uh, this has to be covered, uh, other video, we won't even pay attention to that. Vacuum leak is not right now. So there's a big leak, but there's uh, not right now. So let's see what it does under pressure. And it's a Subaru, and the first thing you always do is do the O-rings right here and right here at the compressor because they always leak, and if they're not leaking now, they will leak. So let's jettison some nitrogen in the system. Now, because I have four manifolds, I could have vacuum and refrigerant or nitrogen hooked up simultaneously. I don't have to switch back and forth. I don't have to risk uh, air contamination inside the system. So you just seen me close the low side because I'm gonna feed nitrogen through the high side and perform like a flushing sweeping action here. So let's open it up a little bit. Oh, let's open it up, let's open it up right here. Why is it so low? I thought I'd crank this sucker up. There it goes. And I should have this on, I have the earpiece headset in my ears right now oh I know why this is going up so I oh, know I don't actually let me shut it off because I think I have it set for over 200 psi and well, not too bad so while that's going See how far away I'm just doing this. Oh, there we go. We got a huge leak right there. Never mind. Let me shut it off right now. Okay. In my ears. It sounds like the ocean. Wow, right there. Nothing you could hear with your ears. So that's leaking. And I think I'm getting some bounce off of this manifold into the sensor as I go over here but this could be leaking too. Front shaft seal, nothing. Go right down here. Look at this, you see how I'm doing? I'm not even going directly to fittings. Just from here, I'm looking for big leaks by sound, ultrasound, ultrasonic. Right between, there's this big old gap right there. Hey, there shouldn't, there's supposed to be foam in here. There shouldn't be a big gap here. There's this huge ass gap between the radiator and condenser. Ouch. Oh, by the way, if you tap this tip and you have the sound all the way up, it does hurt your eardrums. So be careful. Any little like, actually it's, it's a special tap. It's even, this is not bad. There's a special tap that goes on that'll blow your ears. Okay, so this is just a rough preliminary that I'm doing in front of you without being detailed. Look at our pressure go down. 
So it's not visible, or not visible, it's not audible by the human ear. Oh yeah, bubbly bubbly. Now that held perfectly under vacuum. There was no leak there under vacuum. Let's see what we got going on over here. And these will leak too right here. So what you do on all your fittings, you do a wiggle test. So you go get your uh, refrigerant leak detector, ultrasound or bubbles. You fill that up and then you wiggle your hoses. You do a little of this because sometimes while they're static in the garage, they won't leak. But if they're going down the road, they're going like this. And when you do this, sometimes they'll leak there. Another thing you do, you coat the whole entire hose when you really wanna go off and get crazy about looking for leaks. You do the whole entire thing. Yeah, and let's not get bubbles down inside my fitting. Um, but we know we have huge leaks right here. Boom, right off the bat. We won't even go any further than that. So I'm gonna change out these O-rings. Uh, I didn't even go into the evaporator yet. We're gonna repeat to the vacuum and nitrogen. See if it passes after that. And then go into a vacuum again. UV dye, refrigerant, fill up the system. This is a used car sales. I uh, got a brand new radiator in it. So uh, let's see what happens. Be back on the next video. I think will be number three. As you see, we're down to 127. See you.